Hi everyone. I wanted to share a little walkthrough of the source code for the URL API source plugin for OBS that I recently released. If you haven't seen the plugin in action, you should try to use it. It will explain a lot of what I'm going to discuss. So the plugin is set up as, an, as a new source. It has a few properties like the URL that you're going to fetch the information from, some parsing of the output. There's this new dialog here that I created that helps in setting up the HTTP request uh, as well as testing it. and some additional properties here, including some styling with HTML tags and CSS and a, and a timer. So with that in mind, let's go into the code. This is a new plugin, it's built in C++, and it has a number of uh, simple functions. One would be a request, so making the HTTP request that is being done with libcurl and handling the response and parsing that in, in various ways. And then, then some threading. So the meat of this plugin is this new thread that runs continuously in a loop, separate from the rendering thread and the rest of OBS, where I periodically would send the request and parse its output, render that, and send it back into OBS for rendering on screen. So this plugin is an async video plugin, so we're going to use the OBS source output video, occasionally with a frame to be presented to screen. We don't have to run this frame by frame. Uh, this can happen once every few seconds, and that would render to screen, keeping the whole rendering pipeline very lean. Since the requests here are on a timer, this thread runs continuously, but most of the time it's sleeping. And whenever it's time to wake up, it runs through this and then goes back to sleep. One other thing, interesting thing I added here is a condition variable for the thread for the sleep function when the thread is requested to be shut down if the source is being hidden or destroyed completely this would actually interrupt the sleep which might be very long could be up to 10 seconds even it will interrupt the sleep and then exit the, th the thread immediately instead of hanging obs until the thread has completed its sleep and then breaks here if the flag is risen. So this very simple loop here uh, runs the request and then uh, does the parsing and then renders the text. Running the, the request is fairly simple again with curl. libcurl is built into this project I hold all of the information that I need for the request in this struct here. The struct basically holds the URL, the method, the body, possibly some headers, and the parsing. So everything is in here. I get it and I set up the, the curl. I set up the curl request and, and then run the request. Clean up error handling and then run it through parsing. For parsing, I'm using a few different options. For JSON outputs, I would use the Niloman JSON parser as well as the JSON pointer for extraction. Let's say we want to extract uh, just one simple thing from the whole JSON body, we could use JSON pointer. But we don't have to do that. It could also return a complete um, response. This allows for rendering 
much more user friendly thanks to screen. And the same goes for XML. For XML, I'm using Pugi XML. So the Pugi XML will parse the XML output and then also use XPath for extracting information from the XML. And the last option will be a simple regular expression for which I'm using STD. So once the request has been completed and successfully, if there's an error, we would show an error. If the request is complete successfully, we would render it to screen. And the rendering is done with the help of Qt. So there's a very useful part in Qt called Q Qtext document. It's for typesetting or layouting, doing some layout on documents using HTML or um, Markdown. And so I have a little template for this output. It's just a very, very simple HTML uh, document with my output, the thing that I, I actually want to render here in the body inside a paragraph. And then I can apply some styling with CSS to that paragraph inside the body. And so I would take the output, the text that I want to um, render, replace that in the template, then add the CSS props and render this to the Qtext document. So the Qtext document gets the text and so on, um, and then uh, creates a pixmap, basically creates an image out of it, uh, a bitmap. Using text document actually allows me to circumvent a whole lot of potential problems with fonts and layouts, and it basically takes care of everything that has to do with text rendering and styling and all of that stuff. The OBS plugins that do text rendering and so on are very, very involved, uh, and they have multiple hundred line of code files to do text rendering. And so the Qtext document actually does that pretty well, and, it, and it's, very, it's very useful. Once I get the image, I take the buffer from the image and I return that because that is what OBS would expect on its render buffer for the for the frame that's coming in. It'll be a BGRA frame coming in from the renderer and sent to OBS for rendering. So that that's rendering. Maybe the last interesting part about this plugin and its functions would be the extra dialogues, the extra dialogues built in Qt for some extra extra work. So the URL source on itself, I have a few properties here, like the URL and the update timer, CS properties. These are standard OBS properties, but for setting up the request, I needed like a bunch more things, like the method, headers, body, and I would hate to save all of those just on the plugin struct, right? In here, I broke this off to a different struct, a different um, data structure for this, and it's all held up in there. And for this request data, I built this um, dialog that essentially allows a UI for setting these different properties, like the method and the headers, the body, but also the parsing, and a couple extra things like um, testing, right? So the send button actually would send this and uh, and run the request itself. We'll run the request data handler and get the response out and render that to screen. We've seen that. So all of that is done in this in this new in this new dialog. It looks quite involved, but really it's just a lot of uh, these properties. Um, UI. Finally, 
a save button once we save um this would this would reflect all of what we had done in the extra dialog will reflect it back to the plugin outside it would save it into this request struct request information struct and i have an an update handler here that's been given to this dialog to save the information back so the way that it goes is that this dialog is constructed with a very simple and small lambda function in here so when the dialog is opened i give it a lambda function that when the this dialog is closed let's say the user has made some changes saved it now it's closed i have a lambda function back in this context in which in the in the plugin context which from which i can get the request data and save that onto the plugin itself so that would actually go on the settings for this plugin that is pretty much it for this plugin it's fairly simple and feel free to scan through the code and find out more things about the way it works and uh, some of the extra things that I added in here. I haven't covered everything in this walkthrough, so I suggest actually taking a, a deeper look at the code. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.